Today's daily reading comes from the book of Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 26. And yesterday we talked about the acts of the flesh. Um, and the flesh has acts, but today we're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. And it reads as follows, 22 through 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Woo! I sound like some togetherness, too. Woo! Well, it starts off and it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is this. And it, it just tells you what it is. Love, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. See? But the fruit of the Spirit can overwhelm the flesh, okay? And that's because it comes from the Lord. God can change everything with the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit can conquer, can beat the flesh. That love is important. We keep talking about it. Uh, the fruit of the spirit is what goes out when the flesh is trying to get at us. We have to go to the spirit and that's what works. The works of the flesh are just that. But the fruit, and that's why I was telling you there, they're called do two different things, the acts or the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. See, we don't do anything to achieve this fruit. See, those other ones, you got to do some work. Fruit isn't through work. It is given to us by being obedient. Um... And if you notice this fruit, it has some things with it that comfort you. And then it has some, how can I call it, some growth with it, or it can reproduce and grow. You know, if you got some, some love, you can have it, and it can grow out to somebody else. If you have some joy, it, you can have it, and it can grow out to somebody else. If you have peace, you can extend your peace to somebody else, even if they're not being peaceful to you. So it has something else. And remember that these qualities here really bring people who want to know the Lord to you. The acts of the flesh do not do that. But these, these gifts, these fruits... Bring people to God. And Paul used it, you know, as a plural. And when I describe the fruit of the Spirit, I, I describe it as an orange. Because an orange has slices to it. And in order to have a whole entire orange, and the example of the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit right here, it's a singular thing. But the pieces of that fruit is a slice of it. The love, the joy, the peace, the love, suffering, the kindness, it breaks out, okay? And the entirety of the fruit is to have all of those. And this thing here that Paul is talking about is the life after the flesh. He said the works of the flesh, but 
Those things are all plural. There's a bunch of them things. You can read it. Look, it says right there in verse 19, the acts of the flesh, the plural, the it's a plural thing, but the fruit of the spirit, the singular thing, Paul, you know, he, he differentiates. One's plural. You can do all them bad things, but to have the fruit of the spirit, you got to have all these good things to have it. Okay, so the future of the Spirit is love, um, and he tells you all the different things that it is. Um, but the, the one thing, and I shouldn't say just one, but the, there's two that I really think we should concentrate on. Long-suffering. This long-suffering means all the first ones, the love, the joy, and the peace, we can have them over time. Even when we have things coming our way, even when people come in our way, we can still have that. Excuse me. We are not quickly irritated by things, okay? And if the Lord isn't, then we shouldn't be. That long suffering, we need to thank God that He has it. Okay, and then it's then you know you have your fruit of spirit is kindness and goodness. And the only true difference I can see with these is goodness provides something extra. Because goodness has some extra to go with it, some generosity. But the other one that I, I like to talk about is self-control. Because you can see the fruit yourself. Um, and you know the fruits. And we talk about the fruits. But that self-control, man, we need to practice that. We need to deny ourselves in this instance. because. We want to blow up. We want to do it our way sometimes. But that self-control, that self-control can give you some time to step into wisdom and get that discretion that's spoken of in Proverbs. That self-control can give you some time to sit back and just listen and not respond right away because you haven't consulted the Lord right away. And he hasn't answered you right away. That self-control can help you, and it helps others. That self-control helps others, because self-control affects the person outside of you also. And then he says, against such there is no law. And he says, hey, there is no law against these fruits of the Spirit. But the reason why is because if you have those, you know, that love, that joy, that long-suffering, that kindness, then you won't, you won't need the law. Because you already, as Paul tells you, you're already fulfilling the law with the fruits of the Spirit, with the fruit of the Spirit. Let me make sure you know that's singular. So, he says, And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Uh-oh. And that, that's pretty much a tell-all right there in the verse. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And what that is saying is, that's been destroyed. He's saying, just like Jesus, nail it to the cross. So it dies to you. It's no longer yours. And Paul says, crucified. And that crucify, that crucify means a lot. Because it takes you back to Jesus. When you ever hear somebody speak of, crucify or crucifixion you go right to Jesus 
and it tells us to bear something, to take on our own cross and follow him. And when we follow Jesus, we need to step out of the way of the flesh and get into the spirit. Death to the flesh is a struggle and a beating. It can be painful. It can be hard to do. It can be strenuous. But we must die to the flesh. And the flesh doesn't have the say-so. Make sure you know that your spirit and you let your spirit free to persuade you. Excuse me. Please. So you are crucified to the flesh with its passions and desires. In short, with Jesus, you can be beyond that. You can live a beyond that. We should be beyond that. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. And if you want to be like Christ, if you want to do the things he, he did, he said, walk the life of Christ. Be in line with how Christ was walking. So stay with your spirit is what it's saying. And don't become conceited because that is not, again, that's not for us. And he's telling you, some of y'all going to get with the spirit and you get conceited and arrogant and that pride swell up in your head. And guess what? We know you walking in the spirit and you done got this power. And Paul is warning you, don't get that way. It ain't you. Satan likes to work in them little places. We don't always have to be right. We don't always... Have to know the answer. That's why we pray and call to the Lord. And don't provoke one another. See, when you are conceited, you got that problem. Don't be that way. Envying one another. When we are conceited, we are also open to the sin of envy. Mm. So don't be that way because it will lead you away from the fruit. And it'll take you back into the world of the flesh. Amen.